Well, it's Wednesday, June 5th, and I am delighted to report that Boeing Starliner successfully launched to the International Space Station. Liftoff was at 10.52 a.m. Eastern Time. The countdown went really smoothly. The pad crew closed the hatch around 30 minutes ahead of schedule. The weather team had an eye on some cumulus clouds, but they didn't impact the launch. Things went exactly as planned with no major issues during the launch countdown. This is a huge deal. A lot of people have argued with me that we should just use SpaceX's Crew Dragon and we don't need Starliner. Well, NASA disagrees and I understand why. During the space shuttle era, the US was left without a human-rated spacecraft for months, sometimes years, during the periods the space shuttle fleet was grounded. And in those years between the last launch of the space shuttle and the first operational launch of SpaceX's Crew Dragon, 2011 to 2020, the only vehicle that could take NASA's astronauts to the ISS was Russia's Soyuz. NASA has a ton of experience with only having one functional spacecraft to do things that are now routine, taking astronauts to low Earth orbit. NASA doesn't like that much. If there was an anomaly during a Crew Dragon flight, the vehicle would be grounded during an investigation and NASA would once again be without a spacecraft capable of taking astronauts to and from the ISS and have to work with Russia, which is more difficult than it used to be. Though we are still doing crew swaps between Crew Dragon and the Soyuz, and presumably that will continue on Starliner. This is why it's really important to have two crew vehicles and why NASA awarded two commercial crew contracts. But the road to this point has been bumpy for Boeing Starliner. We got so close to liftoff on June 1st, but an automatic hold kicked in at 3 minutes and 50 seconds before launch because of an issue not with the launch vehicle or spacecraft, but the ground system housed at the base of the launch pad. There are three controllers, think like racks of computers, that basically do the same thing for launch. It's a system with triple redundancy, and all three systems have to agree to launch the rocket. This is called the launch sequencer. Well, basically, one didn't. Because this was an instantaneous launch window, they all were for the Boeing crewed flight test. That means that once you have passed all the built-in holds in the countdown and entered terminal count, there is no margin for error for a hold that late in a countdown, so that led to a scrub. ULA switched out some of the hardware, and that fixed the problem. I've gotten a lot of questions on the launch vehicle, the Atlas V, and whether the kinds of issues it's had, like valve issues, are normal. The answer is yes, but. Boeing is getting blamed for a lot of the delays here, and some of that is very valid. First of all, the development delays that pushed this launch to that May 6th point were squarely a Boeing issue. But also, a lot of the issues since the May 6th launch have been with the launch vehicle and ground systems, not the Boeing capsule. That would be ULA, or United Launch Alliance, which is separate from Boeing, but was founded as a joint venture between Lockheed Martin and Boeing to launch spacecraft, so I mean, it's all interconnected here. The space industry seems big, but it's really not. The Atlas V launch vehicle has an incredible track record. It's a very, very reliable rocket. But there are two things at play here. First, it's an older rocket, which isn't a big deal in and of itself, because that means it has a great record of reliability. But the rocket has also been functionally retired, and the contracted Boeing Starliner flights will be the last Atlas V flights. If Boeing flies more Starliner flights than NASA has already purchased, which seems doubtful but could happen, they have to come up with a different launch vehicle, possibly ULA's new Vulcan rocket, which is currently not human rated. But also, this is the first time the Atlas V is launching humans. That means that there's a lot they would have been previously able to work through on an uncrewed mission that they can't on these missions, both because they have to be extra careful because there are humans on board and because these are instantaneous launch windows. All of that being said, delays are absolutely normal in spaceflight. I can't tell you how many space shuttle flights were called off because of valve issues or ground systems problems. It was a lot. But it's also normal to find this especially frustrating, given the delays this spacecraft has already had and just the optics here. There's more pressure on this flight because of how badly Boeing has been doing across their aviation business. And people assume that these launch scrubs are also due to those issues. It's the balancing of get this thing off the ground already, which I have very much felt, while also recognizing that the spacecraft and launch vehicle should not fly until they're ready, with crew on board, because priority here is crew safety, not schedules. 
but then wondering, why isn't it ready? Shouldn't it be by now? Are there larger issues here? Which is always a valid question, and especially when we're talking about Boeing. But as I have said before, I do trust that NASA will not put astronauts in a spacecraft unless they are certain it is safe. But the good news is, things went smoothly today. It has been a long, long, long road to this point, and there's been a lot of cynicism about the spacecraft and launch. Boeing Starliner has been delayed again and again. The initial test flight was supposed to be in early 2017, though that date was probably never realistic. But even after the CFT date was finally scheduled for May 6th, there were delays for other reasons. A pressure valve on the Atlas V launch vehicle that needed to be replaced, a helium leak in the Starliner thruster system, a redundancy issue in the propulsion system. It's been a lot. I have a full rundown on Starliner's problems between that May 6th launch date and the June 1st launch date in a recent video. Interestingly, there was also a hardware failure on the ISS that actually made it fortuitous that Starliner had been delayed. Apparently last week, a pump on the urine processor assembly failed on the ISS. Urine is processed into drinking water on the ISS. It's a closed loop system. So with that pump down, they'd have to store urine and probably launch additional water to the ISS, which is very expensive. And it is possible to store urine, but it becomes a problem when you're talking about storing urine for months. The replacement part wasn't scheduled to go up until August on a Northrop Grumman Cygnus resupply spacecraft. Well, they managed to shuffle some stuff around on Starliner and get that 150 pound spare part onto the spacecraft. They had to swap out two crew suitcases, but if the choice is between having to store urine for months or not having some spare clothes and shampoo, I definitely think they made the right choice here. So now the question is, what is next? Well, for the mission, Butch, Wilmore, and Sonny Williams are going to dock with the ISS. Arrival coverage will start tomorrow, Thursday, at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, and docking with the forward-facing port of ISS's Harmony module is targeted for 12.15 p.m. The hatch opening is currently scheduled for 2 p.m., and then welcome remarks at 2.20. We're not quite sure how long the two astronauts will stay on the ISS. The mission is supposed to last for eight days, but that will depend on a few things, including weather, other traffic at the ISS, and accomplishing all the mission objectives. And then after Boeing Starliner lands, the issue is certifying Starliner for operational missions, assuming, of course, that the rest of this mission does go smoothly. The original plan was to certify Starliner for operational flights by November or December. There's a certification review scheduled in November with NASA, but it is not clear whether all the studies, analysis, and investigations will be concluded by then because of this month-long delay. Mark Nappy, who is the VP and Program Manager for Boeing's Commercial Crew Program, said at a press conference Friday that they will review whatever data they have at that point, even if all the analysis isn't complete by November. It's quite possible they will have it done, to be clear, but we just don't know what kind of anomalies there might be during the flight, and that could take a while to analyze. The goal here at this point is to have the first Starliner operational flight in early 2025, but we'll see if that's doable. At this point, though, I am just hoping the rest of the test flight goes smoothly and there are no serious problems to deal with. And that is about everything I have to tell you about the thankfully successful liftoff of Boeing Starliner. Thank you for watching. I am Swapna Krishna, and this is Ad Astra.